So customer use case number two that I'd like to cover, and very hot topic, which I'm sure you've all heard lots of in the news. I mean, the perfect barometer of any tech news is that if it ends up on bbc.com, then you know it's mainstream. And that topic is ransomware. And you'll notice that I'm saying recovering from ransomware, not protecting. Zerto is not a security company. We don't position ourselves as a security company. That is not the game that we're in. We're there in case all of the security measures you put in place didn't work. You had the zero day exploit and you now have the encrypted data and you need to get out of it. You don't want to pay the ransom for all the reasons that we know that it might not even get the key anyway. And we actually have a customer, a US regional bank, again, I don't want to name names on this type of subject. <laughs> Funny that. <laughs> where they had a 1.5 terabyte file server VM, and this file server VM had some critical CS CSVs constantly being written to it as part of their batch processing for all the transactions. And this is actually a real screenshot from the customer's environment that I gather they took on a mobile phone because of the angle. And one of the users who had access to this CSV data saw some stupid video on an email and thought, ooh, that looks interesting. I will click on that. And what happened? It encrypted all the files, not only on their computer, but that they had access to via map network drives. So all those critical CSVs that the application was then, and the database processes were trying to pick up, couldn't open them. Big, big problem. So the immediate response was, of course, the PC was isolated from the network. Don't leave it on. You don't want it to reinfect. And because the customer had... IRX. Mm-hmm. Oh, sorry. So because the customer had this 1.5 terabyte file server protected by Zerto, what I want to show you is how they use Zerto to recover from this scenario. So we have our ESXi host. We've got our Zerto replication appliance here. And here we have their 1.5 terabyte VMDK on whatever storage it was. So what happens, and I'll just change pen. Once they fin finish the initial synchronization, as the VM is sending writes down to the storage, Zerto has a driver on the ESXi host that is continuously tracking all the most recently changed blocks. You can actually liken it to our own proprietary form of change block tracking. This is how we know what has or has not changed, how we know what happens if the VRA is being rebooted. It's in the memory of the ESXi host. It's not just the memory of the VRA. And what this does is a copy of the write is sent asynchronously, asynchronously to the local appliance which then replicates it to the DR site where you have the target VRA. And in the DR site VRA, it doesn't go straight to the replica disks. The write instead goes into our journal. And the journals are one per VM. And it's just a thin virtual disk. You can put it on the same target data store that you're replicating to, a different target data store. You can set maximum size limitations, warning thresholds. Think of it as a very, very flexible way of having point in time recovery. Because what happens is we maintain the write order fidelity of all the protected VM writes. And this write of maybe encrypting all of these files goes into the journal here. But we've also been maintaining the writes every few seconds for the length of the journal history. And in this customer's environment, they actually had a seven-day journal. In the current version of Zerto, it's now 14 days. That will be changing, which we'll come on to later. So all the customer had to do using Zerto is just select the point in time that they want to recover from. But this only infected a specific number of files. Didn't infect the whole file server because the user didn't have access to everything. So they didn't want to rewind the whole VM because then they're going to lose everybody's work. They only wanted to recover the individual files. Now, at that point, you'd say, well, I can't use Zerto. I'm going to have to go to last night's backup. 
but last night's backup means everybody loses everything that they've done at that point because this was uh, around the middle of the day. So what did they do? Let me show you exactly what they did. And this is a new feature in Zerto 4.5 and it's called file level restore. So using the Zerto interface, all you have to do is select the VM in question. So in their circumstance, it was the file server VM. And we can now see the checkpoints in this journal. We can see the point in time. Now granted, Zerto doesn't tell you when the infection took hold. You do have to do a little bit of investigation and say, when did you click on that stupid video, Mr. User? And then go to a few minutes before that. I didn't click on it at all. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how it happened. It happened all by itself. I was having coffee turned, at the time. I turned on my computer, and you know, the next thing I knew, this malware thing came up. Exactly. So maybe some, uh, some thorough investigation to find the point in time. But you know what? If, this doesn't, if it's not the right point in time, you can easily see and then select a different one. You then have to select the disk. And of course, it's not going to be 00, zero in a decent file server because that's the operating system and it's this data disk. And then we click start mount, a little bit of a warning, we click OK. And all that warning is telling you is that this is actually the same as a failover test almost. That what we're doing is we're creating a view on this disk from this point in time here. And we're presenting it as a disk to the Zerto virtual manager in the DR site. So when you install the Zerto manager in Zerto 4.5, you would see an additional prompt to, set, to install our sign driver. And that driver is specifically for mounting this disk from that point in time. And in the current version, it supports Windows file systems only with Linux file systems coming down the road. Um, and it's Windows file systems that the Zerto manager is installed on supports. What I mean is that if this is a Windows Server 2003 box, which isn't supported by anyone these days anyway, and you're trying to mount a file system on a 2012 GPT partition, it's not going to come on. So this always needs to be a, the respective version, which for most customers it is. You usually have standard Windows version for your infrastructure components. And what happens then is, as you can see on the screen behind me, Zerto has now mounted the file system. And I can just simply browse all of the files from that specific point in time exactly as they were before they were encrypted. And this doesn't have to be just a user's files. It could be any file system object on this protected VM. So it could be the likes of the file share, maybe a SQL database and its log files. You can pull them out from that specific point in time. And in the circumstance of my poor user, so say Andy Roberts here and his home folder was infected and all of his important documents are now encrypted and we need to get them back. What do we do? We select the folder, we click next, and Zerto is going to compress all of the data, send it across the wire over your browser session. You click start download and we've got the files. How easy was that? Okay. That's okay. What are you saying? Wow. <laughs> I'm hard to impress. What about permissions? Yeah. If you're doing this as a backup operator, now you have to restore all the permissions. So as is always the case with these sort of uh, processes, there is going to be a permissions-based issue. So you can lock down the Zerto permissions as to who can do this, but the permission is controlled per, P per VPG. I mean the permissions of the files that we've just yeah. downloaded. Right. So the Zerto Virtual Manager service running in the DR site needs permissions to all those files on the no, file that, system. That, that's not the question Mark's asking. No? Because if, if, if we're talking Windows, yep. and that process is a member of the backup operators group, then it has it, permission to put the files there. But Mark wants the ACL on the file to when you put it correct. there to be restored as well. Yeah, essentially I want that to restore it rather than download yeah, or restore it out of place. Any, this yeah. isn't doing any in-guest right, exactly. uh, recovery. Yeah. You're basically right. doing a, an HTML download as if your backup is on a website. Uh, I mean, it's great. It would yeah. just be nice if it moved it somewhere I, with permissions. I agree. So you know, down the road, the yeah, ability and would, to. And it would be nice if we had a catalog so that when Alice from accounting calls and they're not sure when they last saw that file, I don't have to mount 27 of them to find it. Yep. It was between 9.15 and 9.45 this morning. Fair restore. 
Well, yeah, no, it's more like mm -hmm. it was between 20 you know, the first and the twenty second of, of three month. months ago. Yeah. And to take that a step further, when you're selecting the point in time, it would be nice to uh, look at how big it was or how many files changed. Yep. To kind of give you a hint of where it might be in yeah. the event of and, like a crypto locker. And while we're on the list of things that are nice, mm -hmm. I don't want to <laughs> see SCSI Drive Zero and SCSI Drive One. I want to see C, D, and E. I totally agree. It was the first thing I said, and that's definitely yeah. on the yeah. things of nice to have in the next version, please. Particularly if I've done something stupid like making multiple partitions on each of those discs. <laughs> yes. Yes. I suppose because, yes. in a way, these are all things that would be nice, but one of the benefits is you, you don't actually have an agent that needs to run into every VM, and you would need an agent to run in every VM to see the disk drive to do all this kind of stuff. I don't no, know. No, you could well, get you that could, off yeah. from the VMX. Yeah, you could, yeah. Yeah, yeah the, you could the, the, the drive letter specifically, yes. But if, the you restore. Start, if you start going into the topic of, you know, restoring making, in place, yeah. In, restoring in place and then maybe cataloging, that opens up a whole different kettle of fish, which this isn't today. Because the other problem with cataloging is when you look at the number of checkpoints. So let's go mm -hmm. back to the journal here on this I think you would need a whole different product in itself to catalog yeah, everything on these two. The, you're, you're now moving from replication DR solution to, and you don't need a backup app. And we're just going through the, well, these are all the reasons that we do both replication and backup with different apps. Yep. Because we need all of this stuff. Yeah. And, it, and it's a great point. And from our point of view, if someone co comes to me and says, Josh, I want to use Zerto to replace my backup. Do you have these 101 features? I'll say, no, we're a disaster recovery solution, mobility replication, et cetera. But what I will do is I'll take them through the full stack, show them this feature, and if the user says to me, well, now I don't need any other solution, I'm not gonna argue. And the other important thing as well as not requiring an agent is that I didn't need access to this VM in the DR site. There's no networking considerations. It's all through the browser session. And one final thing to point out is that this is actually now a disk mounted on this Zerto manager. Maybe it's a two terabyte SQL server database that I don't want to try and download from my browser session because it would break. You can just remote desktop to this Zerto manager and access the disk. You could then share that across the network and map it as a drive. It really is completely up to you. But the most important thing with all of these, if we come back to the presentation, is that Zerto is going to allow you to minimize the impact and restore the data from minutes before it was encrypted and not have to accept the data loss of going to the last backup. Yes, I agree there are a million and one backup solutions out there with 101 bells and whistles, but the one thing that they don't have that Zerto does is the actual data from that specific point in time. And that's the beauty of this new feature and how we're going to continue to evolve it to add some more of the necessary bells and whistles that you might need to consider these alternative use cases. And for this customer in question, no ransom pay. Didn't have to pay the ransom. They completely managed to get out of a very sticky situation, which some people can't. When you see it in the news that they have a week of downtime, they couldn't unencrypt the data, they tried the backups and the backups didn't work. Zerto is going to allow you to get out of that. Um, one thing we've been doing on the subject of ransomware is on <coughs> webinars. And webinars and VMUG presentations, and I know this is a subject uh, quite dear to you guys here, is uh, vendor-style pitches at VMUGs, where <laughs> people don't want to hear about another vendor, rah, 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 rah. Um, one thing we've been doing in these webinars is actually spending the first 30 minutes saying how we don't want you to ever have to use Zerto in this scenario. And spitballing multiple different ideas of you know, securing this, locking down that, training the users on this. These are all the things, and this is actually a slide from one of our webinars and presentations on ransomware. These are all the things that we recommend you do to make sure that you never even have to use Zerto to recover from it. So if you're interested in that, we will be having a few more, one for each geographic region at the first Thursday of next month, where we're going to go through these. And the other beautiful thing is that because it's so you know, recommendation and suggestion based, it does solicit a lot of feedback from customers where we actually started with around half this list. And as we've done multiple sessions and people throw extra things on there, then we add them in. And one of my favorite is the, the honey trap. And that's because it runs on PowerShell. 
where you just have a sample text file on an open share to everyone, check it every minute, and if the hash ever changes, you send an email alert saying, this is potentially now encrypted by something on the network, go into lockdown mode. Yes? So it's not so much alerting, but Zerto does log every single session logged in and every single action. So yes, it's not like it's going to send you an email. But if you wanted to query the REST API for that and send it out, then you certainly could. Yes? 